In this presentation, we will continue on taking a look at the company preferences, this time focusing in on the general preferences within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars QuickBooks file. We're going to go back into the preferences, selecting the drop down up top in the Edit drop down. We're going to go down to then the Preferences tab. Last time we left off on the checking preferences. This time we'll spend most of our time on the general preferences. But just to go through, the desktop view is the next item. Desktop view, we have the My Preferences, Company Preferences tab. We're currently on the My Preferences tab. We will be keeping the default settings here. The view, uh, one window view or multiple windows. The default of the multiple windows is pretty nice because you can then navigate through the multiple windows and work through different things at one time. It's useful to have that as a default setting typically. Desktop, we can save when closing the company. So desktop, save when closing the company, default setting. We're going to keep on the default setting. Then it's going to say show homepage when opening a company file. I like having the homepage show up. That's of course this page. So every time we open the company file, we have the homepage uh, showing up. If you don't like the homepage or you no longer feel it's necessary for navigation, then you can uh, up, uh, uncheck that. So switch to the color icons, light background on the top icon bar. You can test that out and, and check it and see what it looks like if you, want, if you prefer it or not. Then we have the display and sound. This will be on the computer settings. We're not going to go into those. We'll keep the defaults here company file color scheme we have the default and then you have a whole lot of different types of color schemes that you can go into we're going to keep the default so it's uh, most common to most people but if you wanted to go in there and test these schemes that could be a fun thing to do then we have the company preferences tab on the right select the features you want to show on the home page once again i'm going to keep the default settings so it's most familiar to the most people the home page of course being this item on the home page if we want to navigate in some other way i find the drop downs are very nice so having the nice flow chart within the home page and then the drop downs for quicker uh, access to other types of items from the drop down windows up top is the way i tend to prefer to see it and view it we then have the uh, finance changes if you do make any changes, it'll ask you if you want to save them. I don't believe I made any changes. I'm going to go ahead and say no, don't save the changes. I didn't make any. And then we're going to go to the finance. Once again, having the my preferences and the company preference. We are currently in the company preferences. We have the annual interest rate. You could set an annual interest rate if it's applicable. We're not going to set the default. We're going to keep it here. And minimum finance charges. We got the grace periods. So within the financing settings, if those apply, we could uh, set those up. However, in our case, we will not set them up. We may look at a future uh, presentations, in which case we'll set up the uh, preferences related to the financing. Nothing in the My Preferences tab. Now going down to the General. So now we're in the General Preferences where we have the My Preferences and the Company Preferences currently in My Preferences. We are going to keep most of the default settings here. These are the, some of the areas, however, which are most common for people to change. And therefore, if you go from system to system, you might, uh, these are some of the things that could be changed. You want to know where they're at. So pressing enter moves between fields. So typically when you go between fields, that will be done with a tab key. Some people like to have the enter key to go between fields. Again, if you get used to that, that could be very useful and it could be frustrating from, to go from one system to the other. So if that's the way someone has their system set up, you just want to be aware of that. Otherwise, if you hit enter, it'll typically record the transaction generally. So we'll keep the default so that it'll be most common to the most people. Automatically uh, open drop down list when typing. So uh, it'll help you to do the automatic search on the, on the uh, drop down list. So automatically open the drop. So for example, if you're entering into a data field and it's trying to guess which account you want to be in in a drop-down field, as you type, it'll automatically open the drop-down list and then, and then show you the uh, list of accounts that are related to the, to the letters you've typed so far. And that can make it a lot faster to pick up the field. Some people don't like it that it pops up, but to me, a lot faster because then you could type a few letters, you could pick up the, the name that you want, and so that's a good default setting to me uh, generally. Uh, beep when recording a transaction. This is, 
not some people could be annoyed by this but it does tell you when it records the transaction if you hit something into the check register sometimes it could be a little confusing whether the transaction had been completed or not because you didn't hit that final enter yet so i'll just keep the beep on there if it's if that's annoying to you then of course go in here and turn that beep off and you won't have to deal with the beep every time you record a transaction it can be annoying if you record say a lot of checks into the check register a whole year's worth of transactions every time you hit enter it beeps at you could be a little annoying but i'll keep it on for now automatically place decimal point so uh, the, when you enter data into the system uh, some people don't like to have to enter the change the pennies point something and would rather even if it's a round number they would rather just basically uh put uh, the the full numbers and then have the system hit the decimal point it's a little bit faster for data entry if you hit a lot of numbers that have pennies to not have to hit the decimal so for example if it's five dollars and 22 cents you could just type in 522 rather than 5.22 and it would save a little bit of time again if you're used to that really it's nice no problem if you're not used to that and and you move between those systems it will drive you crazy because that's not what you're used to so just be aware of where that option is and why that happens uh warn when when editing transactions so when you edit the transaction it's going to give you uh the warn uh bring bring back all one-time messages so bring back all one-time messages i'm going to uncheck that turn off pop and it's the default is unchecked turn off pop-up messages from products and services i would definitely want to default that it used to be the <laughs> the default was to have that on some of these products and services are nice things like the upsells of so things like payroll uh that that it's going to offer you do you want to have payroll do you want to have checks but but the pop-ups are not uh useful oftentimes when you just want to enter the data so to have those off which is now the default which is nice show tool tips for uh, clipped text i'm going to keep that as the default warn when deleting a transaction or unused list item so if we're going to delete something it'll typically give you another warning now you may think that's uh you know not necessary when you delete something but you don't want to accidentally delete it i don't want to accidentally hit the delete and, and uh, have it go away so i keep that on a uh, double verification for typically deleting anything automatically recall information we have the automatically remember account or transaction information we have two ways that this could work we can have the automatically recall last transaction for this name or pre-fill accounts for vendor based on past entries now you could test between the two of these these are really nice features i would choose one of them at least because that allows you when you start to enter new data if i enter a vendor transaction for example if i record a check it'll actually remember what I did last time, which is really useful because it helps you to remember at least the account that it went to. Now it's also might remember the amount that you had that you'll have to change, but you want it to memorize the account because you want to be consistent with the accounts. If you have to basically re-input the account each time, you may be tempted or someone else may be tempted if you're doing some data entry with someone else to uh, choose another account and not be consistent with it. So it's really nice for it to memorize the prior transactions. Do we want the default date to use for new transactions? We're going to use the last uh, entered date as a default, uh, as opposed to use today's date as default. Now, if you're someone that works in QuickBooks real time, you're up to date on your books. When you write a check, it's today's check. When you enter bills today's, then you, you may want this system, this feature on this side to change the default to today's date because that could be useful to you in our problem or if you have situations where you're entering say a full month's worth of transactions for example if you're entering uh the, from the bank statement all the bank statement transactions as of one time period then you don't want the date always to be going back to today's date because you're entering data for the last you know month or so or year or so and therefore you'd have to change the date every time so if you're entering like we will be doing transactions in that format or a test question, then we don't want it always defaulting to the current date. We would rather have it go to the, to the closest date to the last transaction, which is this item. Then we have the keep custom item information when, when changing item in transaction, it's going to ask for there. Then we're going to go to the company preferences up top, second tab. We have the time format show portion of an hour as and you can have your preference in terms of how you like to see the portion of an hour where it's most uh, common wherever you're at 
either a decimal or the minutes with a colon. We've got the minutes as the default we're going to keep. Always show years as four digits. So you could show the years as four digits uh, or you can change that as the default. Never update name information when saving transactions. Save transactions before printing. And so whenever you go to uh, print something, it'll typically say, you know, do you want to save the transaction before you print it? So in other words, uh, you can't really print something until you until you record the transaction. And that's kind of a, a double check so that you couldn't accidentally print an, an invoice and then uh, it's going to be recorded as something else in the system because you didn't finish recording the transaction. So that's typically a good internal control. Manage login settings. Log off every time a user closes the company or exits the QuickBooks. That's a good default system to use. Uh, keep user logged in for, if you were to select this, uh, two days and whatnot. And you, can, and you can go into that. Now, this will be faster, of course. So you might want to experiment with the second one. The default then would be to log off every time. Why? Because it's financial information. That's going to be a better kind of internal control. So that's going to be it for the general. I'm going to say okay. And then we'll keep on moving on with the preferences next time.